Well, good morning. Glad you could join us. I am Dave Riccio. He is Matt Allen, and this is Bumper to Bumper Radio, heard here every Saturday from 11 to noon, right here on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you've got car questions, we've got answers, so we encourage you to give us a call and give us a call early at 602 277 5827. 602-277-KTAR. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, fact or fiction, gosh, we better come up with one of those, open phones, extended warranties, as Cooper mentioned. We've got the uh, Shy Brothers from Mesa Auto Works in studio. And uh, if you're a school teacher, we've got a little interesting thing for you. Looks like uh, Frank out at Desert Car Care at Dobson and Chandler, they're doing a free oil change for school teachers. Now, Frank, my wife is a school teacher, and I emailed it to every school teacher in the district, so uh, I hope you're ready. <laughs> so what's the deal out there, Dave, at, at Desert Car Care? All teachers, you bring your, bring your teacher ID and be there by noon. And you get a, a freebie on the house away for, de- as Frank would say, mucho gracias <laughs> <laughs> to the teachers. To for, the teachers, uh, for sure. So take advantage of it, you know, uh, which is, uh, and actually the guys from Mesa Auto Works, they were just telling me they do a 10% discount for teachers, which is pretty nice. So That's very good. Yeah, and speaking of Mesa Auto Works and the Shy Brothers, we have Stan and Jeremy Davis. <laughs> They're over here laughing. <laughs> we're going to make them talk. Stan and Jeremy the, the son owners of Mesa Auto Works, and uh, your, I guess your dad started the shop 23 years ago, I learned, uh, when we were chatting a little earlier, and uh, now you've been at this location four years at uh, Higley and just south of McKellick, south Higley? That is correct. Yep. And, and you guys started life as a uh, Volvo and Mazda specialty, and I understand uh, over these years, like many of us, you have, I mean, you do everything now, right? Correct. We've evolved to other cars and car lines, and uh, everything's going well. We like to take care of the customers. Well, yeah, you get that. Um, you know, I have some friends that worked at Honda Specialty Shops, or I worked at a Porsche-only shop, and everybody else has another kind of car. So you start limiting these one one makes, and, and your customers are going, well, can you work on this? Can you work on that? Can you work? And then pretty soon, now we fix everything. That's correct. Yeah. Pretty much. So you guys are way out there at East Mesa, right? So McKellips and um, we're on McKellip, we're on west side of Higley between Brown and McKellips, right by Falcon Field. Yep. I get lost. I don't know Mesa. I'm, it's like uh, another world to me. It's yeah. like uh, West New Mexico. That's what I consider it. So. I don't even know. It's. I mean, you go out there, and there's, I I just don't get out to that area. I feel like I'm in uh, just out of town. I guess I am. Out of well, town. extended warranties. Are they worth it? I know every time I buy a car, and I don't buy a car very often, but you get there in that little office, and the guy's like, well, you're going to want our extended warranty. Okay, really? Well, yeah, and, I mean, he's selling it. Yeah, I mean, it's like a big deal. i got to have it. It's life or death if I don't buy this thing. Plus, there's desert car paint protection pro <laughs> too, which uh, I don't buy, by the way. Uh, so he's offering it to me. The other thing you might come across, hey, it's time to look for an extended warranty, is you're out buying a used car. You know, I notice used car prices are changing here. Lately, are they going down? Used car prices, I read an article in the Republic last week that the used car prices are down, you know, 3 to 5%, maybe not a whole lot, but money's money. Well, but, and there's more supply. There's not as much of a demand for the used cars. People are maybe holding on to some bucks again. Prices are coming down, but don't get in that false sense of security. I think that's one of the things that the extended warranty does. You've got this used car lot that's – you know, got all these all these used cars, and they've got slick salesmen in there. Oh, everything! It's all, everything's covered. And I, I think can, you're I think you're a slick salesman. Yeah, right. Everything's covered. Yeah, you heard me selling a used car <laughs> yesterday, right? <laughs> uh, everything's covered. We took care of everything. Every when you start hearing everything, everything, I guess it's something to be worried about. Uh, everything's covered by the warranty. You don't have to pay for anything. I think it gives you a false sense of security that everything's okay. Because I can tell you, I don't know of anybody who has a used car for sale that went ahead and just fixed everything before they sold it. Mm. Usually not the way it goes. I don't know. I think extended warranties have goods and they have bads. Stan, you've got a relative who lives out of town. You can't fix their car for them. They're calling you up. They're going to buy this used car. What is your advice? I would recommend to get an extended warranty, but I would check with your local shops, see which ones have the 
best relationship with whatever extended warranty company is? Well, we know. We know the names of the good ones and the bad ones. We come across them all the time. There's so many fly-by-nights. I had a car in my shop just the other day. They had just bought it three months earlier. They bought an extended warranty because you feel like, oh, that's a sense of comfort. Oh, I'm fine. I got an extended warranty. Like, this thing's going to just do everything for you. And it was an axle seal that was leaking. And they said, I said, hey, this axle seal is not covered because I talked to the warranty company. And they had a list of things that were covered. And that's the kind of warranty you got to be scared of, the, list, the ones that only list what is covered, but they don't list what's not covered. Because you want, you want them to say, hey, we're not going to cover this, you know, or we're not going to cover that. But if they tell you what's covered, well, you as a consumer, you're looking at this big list, and uh, you know, it, it sounds great. It looks like everything covered, bumper to bumper, but it's not. Well, there, it depends on the warranty. There, there's going to be you know, a meal. What's a meal? Is a meal a little 100 calorie thing, or is a meal this big meal? It's I mean, there's my analogy of the day, Dave. It's it, it's so so subjective. Oh, here's an extended warranty. It comes with the car; it's free. You see, some of these truck places have the engines for life. Mm. Well, yeah, it's an extended warranty that covers the engine and the transmission. But I got to tell you, you know, going you'd be looking like a circus freak jumping through all the hoops you've got to go through to. To get one of those to uh, <laughs> to to cover to cover something. To cover There's something. plenty of fine print, and that's what you really got to look into. And, so, how does a consumer do? I protect myself. I'm going to buy one of these things. I think sometimes they're fifteen hundred dollars. Sometimes they're twenty five hundred dollars, and really anywhere in between. And I have seen some uh, nine hundred dollars specials on late night TV as an infomercial. I I <laughs> would say that the late night infomercial ones, if they you call them and they're pressure pressuring you to. Buy, you know, if you buy right now, it's a discount, 20% off one more time. Yeah, bad ones. Um, but Dave, we we're still talking about the, the major components. You maybe you have one that covers just engine and transmission. You can have some that, you know, just catastrophic failures. Some, the exclusionary plan. So if you're shopping, you want to get the, the warranty that has a very specific list of what is not covered. As opposed, if you start to look at one that starts listing the things that are covered, that's going to be the more restrictive plan. It looks all grandiose because it's got, look, all this stuff right here, it's all covered. But only that is covered, and it's got to be just like it's written in the book. Well, I think Stan mentioned the ones that have caps. So once you hit 2000 bucks, you're done. The warranty pays for nothing. So you've got to read the fine print if you are going to do one of these things. I'm not altogether saying they're bad, but the ones that bother me is you've got a car that comes with a factory warranty with a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper. And in some cases, they have a 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. So that's going to be your big expensive components like your engine and your transmission. So you're buying double coverage, and the second coverage really isn't that good. So you've got to look into that if you're looking at a new car. Well, but the other thing, too, and you mentioned that, Dave, if you're buying a brand-new car, you really don't need that warranty until 35,999 miles. So if if you're in the right financial condition to buy one of these, and it, I mean, it's all insurance. It's a gamble. It's really what it is. It's an insurance policy. You don't have to buy that on day one and finance it for 36 months, or you don't have to buy it on day one and pay cash for it if you're paying cash for a car. Well, after two years, you may decide you don't want the car anymore. Well, that too, but you can still buy these warranties at the lower rate while the car is still under the factory warranty. There is, they're, they're typically less expensive to do that. So that, that's one thing, if you, depending on your financial wherewithal. to. Well, the frustrating thing for me is when I have to call a customer and say, that's not covered. And it, you, you mentioned transmissions. Oh, we cover transmissions. But when you read the fine print, it says anything that's an internal lubricated part. Well, if it's got a $300 solenoid hanging on the side of it, well, that's not internal. So therefore, we don't cover it, you know, or, you know, how much is the deductible? You know, all those things need to be looked in. Don't just, I mean, when the guy's there and he's going to sell it to you, he's, he's good at what he does. You know, he's slick. I mean, this is going to take care of all your worries for your car. You're just out of the, you're out of the woods for your car for the next, you know, five years. Well, and then there's another type of warrant. Well, it's not really a warranty that they will try and sell you in the finance office. And that's the prepaid maintenance plan. So you buy it, maybe a service contract, I think they call those. And you'll get, and it covers oil changes and rotations and tire balancing and, and whatever. Well, that's just prepaid maintenance. So hang on to your money, in my opinion. I keep my money in my pocket, and I'll deal it out as I want to, where I want to. Some of these plans, you buy this extended warranty or you buy this maintenance program, now you're married to that dealer mm. or to that wherever. You may right. not. You, so that's the other thing when you're choosing one of these warranties. You want the freedom to go where you want to go. 
Well, we've got Robin on the line, and we've got open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Whether you've got warranty questions or any question about your vehicle, you're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and we've got Stan and Jeremy Davis from Mesa Auto Works in to help us help you with your car. So... And you've got about 40 minutes to get on down to Desert Car Care at uh, Dobson and Chandler Boulevard. If you're a school teacher, they're doing free oil changes for school teachers. Honey, if you're out there, I know I can change your oil, but please go get it for free over at Desert Car Care. <laughs> so anyway. They're going to be lined up, Frank. Come on. So one day we were previously talking about extended warranties, and, and there's one thing that we've got some feedback on before that I mentioned, and I want to make sure everybody knows this again. If you have an extended warranty and you sell your car, it may or may not be transferable. But if you have an extended warranty in a car that you own that was totaled, for example, a lot of people don't, they just forget about it. You can get that refunded back to you. So if a car gets total loss from an accident, you just have to write a letter, cancel the policy, you'll typically get a 100% refund, or it will go back to the finance if it was financed to help pay down the loan. Hmm. So or, a little tidbit there from bumper to bumper. <laughs> I'll, I'll write a letter for you, and I'll split it with you. How's that sound? Well, we're going to go with Robin in Maricopa on a 2001 Dodge Caravan. Go ahead, Robin. You're on bumper to bumper okay. radio. All right, great. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I have a 2002 Dodge Caravan. I made a mistake. I bought it brand new in December of 2001. It has over 230,000 miles. It still runs good. I take very good care of it. Um, But this is what happened. When I stopped the car and I parked, if I don't push down on my brake three times and then pull it out with my foot, my right tail light comes on and stays on and runs my battery down. So I want to know, what is that? Well, first question, is your left tail light burned out? (laughs) Because they should both be on. No, 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 it's not burned out. And I've I've even checked the bulb and everything. It works. I mean, but... It'll stay on if I don't press the brake three times and then pull the brake out mm. with my foot. You know what I mean? Like, well, is, there a, well, a, is there a connection for the brake and the wire and all that stuff back there? Well, there is. Underneath the, the, uh, underneath the dash there where the brake pedal is, there's a brake switch that's connected to the pedal typically. And what's happening is you, when you're... I don't know what stepping on or pumping the brake is doing, but when you lift up on the pedal with your foot, you're just making the pedal contact come in, in contact with the plunger on on the on the uh, switch, and that's what's turning off the light. So it's it's a lot of cars. Oh, Dave, you had one uh, that was co- thought people had a transmission problem, but it was just the it was misadjusted, which they was don't out come of adjustment. out of, was out of adjustment because they installed it wrong. But a lot of them, there's a little rubber button if you will that's on the brake pedal pad or maybe it's on the maybe there's a uh, a little bracket on the brake pedal and that little rubber will fall off and that's the difference that that quarter inch thick uh little tab there is the difference whether or not the brake light's going to go off what's unusual about hers is that uh one of the brake lights was stayed on and th- that brake switch doesn't discriminate between either and usually there's a spring that actually pulls that brake pedal up so maybe that spring 230,000 miles maybe that's getting worn out well, I you know, wasn't why is really. Pedal I wasn't like just that? being a smart aleck when I said, "Is the left side burned out?" Because you're right; it's not going to discriminate. It should have the right, the left, and the third brake light. Well, Jeremy it had the answer, good. but he just is so <laughs> shy over there. They can't see you, so don't. Worry. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so yeah. thanks for the call, Robin. We're going to go with Julie in Mesa on a uh, looks like an 06 Acura. Go ahead, Julie. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, thank you very much for taking my call. I'm hoping you can help me out. Um, it's actually my daughter's car. She bought it brand new back in 2006. And what the problem is that we're having is that whenever it's not driven for more than a couple of days, it's completely dead. We've had it to three different shops, including an Acura dealership, and they you know, keep thinking that something's wrong with it, and it's, uh, but it never gets fixed. Hmm. How, how many? It, how many? So it'll go three. If you don't drive the car for three days, you said, then it will. It's just completely right. dead. 
And then, right, and like it got started. Actually, it's sitting just right now because uh, she hasn't used it for a couple of days. My husband started it yesterday just to make sure it was going to start, and it did. He went out there just a half hour ago to try to start it and try to unlock it with the you know the uh, key fob or whatever, and it wouldn't even unlock. It's completely dead. So it's completely dead this morning. But they tried, it, but he started it yesterday, and it was okay. And it was okay. Yes, and. That it's been doing this for about two years, and like I say, we've had it to the Acura dealership for it. You know, like they've been to on a trip to California and went to Disneyland and didn't use it, you know, didn't drive it for a couple of days while being at Disneyland, go to get in it, and it's completely dead, can't open the door, or, you know, or anything with the key fob. It's just completely dead. Well... You know, there, Dave. It's gonna. It's one of those deals, guys. Jeremy, Stan, uh, in your shop, what would you do? I know we would. We would want to have the car for a couple days, a few days. Probably just commit to having the car. We're gonna want to get to a full charge so we can test everything and then park the car. Do you on a, on a situation like that? Do you want to duplicate it first, or you just want to go in and and? Uh, I mean, there's certain things you're gonna check. You're the technician in the in the group, Jeremy. Where would you go? Well, I, at first I would, like you said, get it to a full charge, and then uh, I would. Obviously, she's had a problem for many, for many years with this issue, so I believe that she has a problem. So I'd probably dive into, to checking it for a draw, which it could be anything from a computer stand awake to, just a relay stick in. It's it's just you'd need it for the that three days. Yeah, I mean to, to get it to act the, up. And... The old school way. I mean, that's a fairly sophisticated car. Mm -hmm. I mean, the old school way. You're gonna you're gonna look for a draw on the battery. Now we're gonna use a use an amp meter. Right. But you know, you'd put a test light. I remember on your old Chevy, you put a test light between the ground of the battery and the battery cable. And if it lights up, you know you have a draw. Then you just go start pulling fuses. So we need to isolate right. the circuit and find out what's staying on. Sometimes the trunk, we might close somebody in the trunk at the shop, leave them there for a little while too. But you know, the the trunk light might stay on. We've had the glove the glove box. <laughs> We've done locked the, lock the new guy in the trunk, right? But yeah, the glove that's... box light stays on in the car. Well, you can't see it because it's closed, right? Um, so so when we get the thing towed in dead, we're gonna open the hood, hook up power, get the thing, and just start looking before we open. The, try not to open the doors or, or leave the doors open. And just see if there's any lights, anything that's on. Her sounds pretty consistent, but what we're referring to is a key off draw. So there's a draw on the system when the key is off. And I'm not sure if hers was intermittent where sometimes it's happening and sometimes it's not. Where, you know, every two days the car sits, it doesn't start. Or maybe sometimes it just sits for, you know, 12 hours and it starts right back up. It should be fairly easy to duplicate, I would imagine, in but you know we talked about intermittent problems last week. Mm. It this isn't that intermittent. It's fairly duplicatable, but they can certainly be a nightmare. I know when I, you know, back in the '80s, I lived in Northern Virginia, worked at a Porsche specialty shop, and we used to install radar detectors. Well, we had a this pilot one time. <laughs> Dave, we were talking about. This. We had a pilot one time, and he, he'd bring his car. He'd park it at the airport, and it was always dead when he came back from a trip. We couldn't figure it out to save our life. Well, the built-in radar detector was going off the whole time it was parked at the airport. Nobody there to hear it. It comes back every time from the trip. This thing's been going off for three days. Battery's dead. In the shop, the radar detector wasn't going off. Just so goofy the, things. The radar from the airplane was setting the thing off. Well, whatever's going on at the airport that used to trigger the radar detectors. Yeah, the people from the TSA scanning people. So <laughs> when we come back, we've got plenty of open lines at 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTR. When we come back, Fact or Fiction. You listen to Bumper to Bumper. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we've got Stan and Jeremy Davis from Mesa Auto Works in East Mesa. We are all here to help you with your car, and uh, time is almost running out to get out to Desert Car Care if you're a school teacher for your free oil change. Again, Desert... <laughs> <laughs> You're loving that, aren't you, Dave? I sure am. So we've got Dave, Jack, Beth, Stewart, and Tony on the line. We are going to go with Stewart on a Buick. Uh, I'm sorry, Stewart. Stewart in Buckeye. In Buckeye. With a 2010 Honda. What's up, Stewart? 
Hey guys, hey, uh, I have a 2010 Honda Insight, um, and the air conditioning, this is, uh, you know, when we bought it, it was nice and cool out, so we didn't have any inkling that there was anything, you know, wrong with it. It's unique because if I run the AC up high once it's, you know, been on for a while, it stays nice and cool. If you're just getting in the car um, and you, you know, you're running down the road, stays, you know, it gets up there, stays cool. But the minute that, you know, you you come to a stoplight or that you're running at a lower RPM, you know, it it starts blowing warmer air. I thought maybe it was a fan, but you know, I look at cars now as almost like electrical work. It's it's magic. So I'm not a magician. So. Hoping that you guys can help out. Sure, Stuart. Have you had? Have you made any attempts to service the air conditioner and to make the air conditioner any better? Yeah, I, you know, I had a friend who's you know backyard mechanic, and and he's like, I, I don't know why it's ramping. But, you know, when it ramps down. Now, one thing, you know, when it goes from, you know, from battery power to the gas, the hybrid. I wondered if that was had anything to do with it, but yeah, I don't know. Well, it could, but so did your friend try and charge the air conditioner or do anything like that? He did, you know, just tried to put some more in, yeah. Okay. More more of the, you know, new Freon, but. Well, it sounds to me like a fan issue, but then you throw in, you know, the fact that it's the Insight and it's the hybrid, there may be something funky going on there, but very well not. So the first thing, though, is having somebody just add refrigerant is the wrong way to go about it. You could have only been two, three ounces low on refrigerant, and now you got the magic can, if you will, from, from the auto parts store, and then you put in 10 ounces or 8 ounces. Being overcharged by three or four ounces is plenty to make the system go backwards and not operate. So it very well may have been a low charge issue, and you've just got it overcharged. So you probably need to get it to a shop that can do a service on the air conditioner. You need to pull out everything that's in the system, weigh it, measure it, recycle it, let our air conditioning machine do its magic, and then recharge it with the right amount. You have to have the baseline there first. And then, based on your description, to me it sounds like a cooling fan issue. You have plenty of airflow driving down the road. You come to a stop where the car slows down. No airflow over the radiator, no airflow over the condenser equals warmer air conditioner. Jer- uh, Jeremy's looking super shy over there. Come on, you got to have some thoughts. I was thinking the same thing. Exactly so. the same thing. Yeah, it's got to be either a flow issue across. It's not pulling enough air across the condenser when when you're sitting there at a light, or like Matt said, that the pressures are got to be right. So if you do have too much Freon in it or not enough it's not going to cool the way it's supposed to. Yeah, there is a, it, it's down to the ounce in the grams on these sometimes. We are always talking about how things have changed. I remember that was in the old days. That was something you did. You just went out in your driveway, threw a can of Freon in that thing, and it was good to go. But you were talking about big, bulky, ugly air-conditioned systems. Now these things are down to the ounce. Got to be right on the money or it's not going to work right. So, hey, I appreciate the call, Stuart. We are going to go with Beth in surprise on a 2012 Honda Civic. Go ahead, Beth. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Um, we have um, on the rear view window of the car, and you only notice it when you're driving in the evening or at night when headlights and street lights are on. But when you look out the back window where all the defrost lines are, it's very um, hard to see out of. It's... Um, kind of like when you squint your eyes and light kind of bounces all around something, the whole back window looks like that. Is this before or after drinking? <laughs> well, <let's see. laughs> Definitely <teasing>. before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would ask, is there any window tint on the window? Well, there is. And when I complained to the dealership, they had me bring in the car. They took off the tint. They put a new one on. They thought maybe it was defective. And then took it home, couldn't tell if it had worked or not until it was nighttime. It hadn't fixed it. So I'm thinking there's something defective with the window itself. Um, you know, we, we have other cars that I drive, and it's never an issue. They all have the rear defog line, you know, defogger lines. You look out back. I never think twice about it. There's something about this car. I mean, I, I don't even like driving it at night because it's so hard to see out of. Are you, when you see that, are you seeing it through the rear view mirror? Or if you turn around and look also out the back without using the mirror, is it the same thing? Both ways. Both ways. 
And, and has this done this since you bought this car new, presumably? Yes, it has. You know, I'm thinking I want to borrow a 2012 Honda from the dealer. Say, here's mine. Let me take a loaner car home and mm. see how that one. See if does. that's different. Yeah. Or, or go drive one. I mean, they, they've got to be open at night. It's hard to find nighttime. Now. It's getting darker earlier now. But uh, you, know, you might have to wait a month or so still where it starts darkening up and get to the dealer where they've got one and say, let's go for a drive. you got to get one of them, somebody in the car with you. I think, and, and, ex, and experience the same problem and see if, they, right. see if they can see what you're seeing. Because I think they're thinking it's me, and if it was me, I, I would think I would see it out of any rear window that I would be looking through if it was something with my eyes and, and windows with the defogger lines. Um, they've also said maybe taking off the tint, that then maybe it won't be an issue. So I don't know if I should have them strip the tint and then drive it like that. Um, and see too. So that would be worth a try. I, I've got a good friend that works at one of the Honda dealerships. If you send me an email at bumper to bumper radio.com, I'll put you in contact with him and we'll okay. see if we can't get this thing resolved for you. Great. So this Thank would, you so would be annoying. Yeah, that's that's a that's a weird one. I mean I I would want to see it on another identical car and see if it's you know, I was thinking the tint was goofy, it's just a little, a some air weird combination of tint and in the defroster, something like that going on. So Anyway, uh, 602-277-5827. looks like we got Tony in Mesa. It looks like he might have an answer for our power problem. Go ahead, uh, Tony. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, Don, guys. Good to talk to you. I listen to you on Sunday mornings. Hey, the lady that had the Acura, 2006 Acura, uh, I have a 2006 Honda, and um, it, it was doing the same thing, not starting to put a new battery in. When you hit the key, the lights weren't going on. Uh, they took it over Earnhardt Nissan, and... Um, they had it for a couple of days. They didn't think anything was wrong. It had a new battery in it. And then it happened to them. And uh, Jason Christian, the uh, service manager over there, uh, found out that it was a relay switch. Mm. Yeah, you could a relay sticking on some component or something like that. And it was draining the, it was draining the battery. It, and it did the same exact thing that she's talking about. Yeah, and well, the you know the now the magic question is which relay is it? You know, there's there's so many different things in the car that right. can turn on. So that's when we're checking for those they call it a parasitic draw, or in that case, just a draw on the battery. I think Michael Henry was just he's the guy that uh, you know helps out with bumper to bumper, and uh, he was uh, he his Toyota Land Cruiser same problem. He had headlights staying on or something like that. He finally got that fixed. So. Some goofy problems, but yeah, you just got to narrow it down to the circuit. And once they have it narrowed down, it could be, again, a relay sticking. Uh, there's there's the solid-state relays where the electronics can just go goofy them. The actual contacts in a normal relay can stick. There's so many different things. The uh, It could be the, the wireless, uh, you know, head the Bluetooth uh, deal stick. I mean, who knows? There's so many different things. You just got to get it tracked down. Well, thanks so much for the call. We're going to go with Jack in Tempe on a 1999 Cadillac Seville. Go ahead, Jack. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Oh, thank you. Um, I have a nine, yeah, 99 Seville, and uh, if the car sits for several hours, the key fob doesn't work. I have to open it with the key, and then I start it, and the alarm goes off, and I push on the key fob unlock button, and the alarm turns off, and... But if you drive around for a while, the key fob will work for about an hour or two. I mean, if you go back and forth out of the car, it'll work. But if you leave it set for several hours, it won't work. And also, the trip set goes back to zero. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Like, mm. the, it resets to zero even, you know. It sounds like kind of a body control module type of thing. Things going dead brain dead when the car's been off yeah i'm not brain dead when the car's <laughs> it's not waking not, up i'm not sure if that cadillac has a um the pass lock system with a separate security system off the top of my head or if that's part of the body control module but that's odd that it would be going back to zero on the odometer it makes you think of a power problem uh something lo- you know the computer's losing their keep alive memory if you will something that, that's you know, they's all, they've all got to have a little bit of power going to them, not enough to kill the battery like in the Acura. And we talked about key off draws, but then there's some key off power sources. You know, I had I went down to my cell phone. It doesn't charge when the car's off. So I went down to the stereo shop, and I had to wire that thing directly to the battery. So when the car's off, it'll still charge. So, But that's not enough to kill the battery. So, no. So that, that's, a, that's something that um, most shops, if you're looking for a shop in Tempe, go to bumper2bumperradio.com. 
uh, Glenn over at Good Works. Joel at Arizona Imports, the Cadillac is probably not something that he's going to want to get into, especially that, <laughs> especially that problem. That was probably great for Glenn right there on the border of Tempe Mesa and uh, or Greg at ADS. But it's just a matter of getting in, finding out what's going on with the alarm problem, trying to duplicate the problem. Maybe it's something that's happening in the heat of the summertime but not the cooler of the wintertime. Hard to say. Just need to duplicate it and find it. It's time for Fact or Fiction. Man, it has been so good to wake that thing up from the grave. Fact or Fiction. I asked Jeremy and Stan, hey, what is the fact or fiction for the day? And uh, they came up with several. And uh, this is one that my wife, I, I couldn't get her out of this habit. When I first met her, she always turned the air condition off when she shut the car off. Because her dad told her it was a good idea. And that's what Stan had to bring to the table. So fact or fiction. Are you still trying to break her some of those bad habits her dad I, <laughs> <laughs> Big I would, trouble. I would say I'm her daddy now, but it wouldn't go over real well. You just did, Dave. You just did. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, uh, does that do anything? Fact or fiction, Stan, what do you think? I'd say it's fiction. It doesn't make any difference when you start the car up the next day or an hour later because it still takes time for everything to cycle on and everything shuts down when you when you turn the car off anyways you turn the car off anyway what do you think jeremy fact or fiction i agree it's fiction fiction what was the question again what does the air is, the is there air any point to turn the air conditioner off when you turn the car off because is, is it you know now no. does it shut any doors so little gerbils and stuff can't crawl into your car <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to say I, I don't do it, so it's going to be fiction. It doesn't do any good because when you go to cycle the key, the the way that's wired, everything else except for essential power is getting cut, so the compressor's not engaged, the fans aren't on. Everything gets cut, and it goes uh, comes back on, and there's delays and whatever. So, Well, when we come back, the next factor of fiction, is there any benefit to leaving your tailgate down when you're driving cross country? You're going to save gas. So when we come back, we've got uh, – couple of phone calls you're listening to bumper to bumper radio well welcome back to bumper to bumper radio i am dave riccio here along with matt allen we've got stan and jeremy davis from mesa auto works in here to help us help you with your car and uh looks like you've got precisely 11 minutes if you're a school teacher to get on down to desert car care for your free oil change and uh, we were talking uh you know before the show and you guys you guys actually do a discount for school teachers at your shop that is correct. So that's ten percent off uh, ten. parts and labor for Mesa Public School teachers. Okay, or any school teacher. Any school teacher. Well, Just, and then you've got uh, Falcon Field over there by you. So for isn't for, there a big Boeing plant yep, out there? We also have discount for Boeing employees. Same discount, ten percent. Yes, sir. That's very good. It's always good to get involved in your community in some way or another. I mean, everybody plays a part. You know, we got school teachers, we've got doctors, we've got lawyers, we've got truck drivers we get everything everybody does something but it's it's nice to be part of the community and have that community business and that's one of the things i do like about mesa auto works i mean you're talking to two brothers uh and then stan senior it's it's a family business um and they're proud of it you're going to see them at bashes they're not going to duck you it's not that kind of auto shop well they're going to be proud to see you yeah we were talking before the show having a bagel and, and it's nice just like many of the other shops on bumper to bumper we 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 started as technicians. You worked with your dad in a dealership. It's you know two brothers. You're going to a place where the people that are there care. It's their name on the building, just like my shop. I mean, I've been there 18 years downtown. I I'm there every day. We have a reputation, and I'm proud. I I mean, I could go do multiple things and 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 not work and be absentee owner, but I'm a I I want to have my hands involved and be there. Because when you're not there or you're not involved, it's hard to keep things perfect like you want them. Well, it's funny. At Tri-City Transmission, we survive on referral from general repair shops, you know. So whenever I get a, a referral from Stan, they, he always calls me. He always gives me the full story, the full background. And he really does care, and he wants to see his customer taken care of because that's someone he's built a relationship with for, for decades now. So anyway, let's get to our phone calls. We've got... Looks like Dave in Mesa, he's buying a used car. Go ahead, Dave. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Say, um, yeah, we are looking at a used car. We actually have two in mind. And I was just wondering if you can give me kind of a, um, an idea, comparison of what I might be looking at here. The two cars are a 2000 Honda Odyssey that has 135,000 miles on it. And then there's a 2003 
Dodge Intrepid with 77,000 miles on it. I, I know it's kind of an apples to oranges thing, but just longevity and and, uh, and things like that. What what should I be looking for, looking at? Or do you see, uh, are there red flags on either one of these models? There's, um, for me, when I hear that, the Odyssey, I think of a Honda as a, it's just a good 200,000 mile vehicle. With the exception of you're going to be buying a transmission right there, 120, 130,000 miles. That's not uncommon. That's not to say it will happen, but it's not uncommon. But for the practicality of the two, you know, one feels more like a family vehicle. You know, we're going to you know be driving to San Diego with a you know car full of kids. It has a practicality aspect versus the four door sedan. Yeah, if I was given the choice between a Honda or just about any other car, especially the cars that you mentioned, I'm going Honda. Stan and Jeremy, I saw them cringe, right, you know, when you, when you gave the second option. I agree. It, it, yep. It's Honda all the way. But regardless of which car you buy, it's important that you have that car checked out. Mm. And don't get worked up over thinking, I've got to buy this car because the salesman's doing the takeaway and telling you, oh, i got four other people coming to look at it or, or whatever the case may be. Dave, you go take that Honda on a six-mile test drive. That's not long enough to experience the transmission problems that happen in no. those Odysseys. 20, 20 miles into it, 30 miles into it. we got to scan it for codes. That's one good way to see that that's happened. But we always say, you're buying a used car, let's get it checked out. Okay, so I'm a consumer. I don't really know. I don't like buying cars. I don't feel uncomfortable asking those questions. So, Matt, what might that look like? I'm, you're buying a car from me. Well, if it depends. I like to listen, although I have a hard time doing it sometimes. <laughs> Believe, imagine Ask that. me to take the car I'm selling you to a mechanic. Well, I'm gonna when I go look at the car, I'm going to just let you tell me everything about it. Just flap your gums, tell me, let the salesman sell you and tell you about the crumple zones and all this stuff that they were taught to, to sell cars with. And then just tell them that's all great and you'd like to take it on a test drive. Go for a long test drive. And they're going to start talking about price and say, well, I'm interested, but first I need to take this car to my mechanic or to an independent mechanic uh, and have it checked out. I'm going to play the other side. Oh, we have all these cars run through a 2,055-point check. These things are bulletproof. I mean, this is like a certified used car, I think. I understand that, and that's perfect. So there should be no problem with having me check it out to have all that verified. And mm. I want to load it up. I want to put my car seat in it. I want to take it for a 30- or 40-mile test drive. And and then my mechanic will take a look at it. I don't know. We can't keep these things on the lot. By the time you want to go through all that, this car's already sold. Well, then sell it, I guess, and we'll go somewhere else. <laughs> right? That's pretty good. Well, it sounds like they should raise the price if it's going to go that fast. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, why wouldn't it be sold if you sell them so fast? But the Honda Odyssey, you can't go wrong with the Honda. No, I, I, I would agree with that. But that you know conversation about getting the car checked out, you know, you don't let the, you know, the what is it, the fox watch the hen house? Something like that. You know, it's just a fundamental difference, okay? They have one one perspective, one paradigm. You have a completely different paradigm, so you need to go find somebody who can look at the car for you with the same paradigm as yours. You know, they they want to make sure it's good. And we're looking, when we do a pre-purchase inspection, you probably spend plan to spend between $50 and $100, but we're, we're looking for accident damage. We're looking for flood damage. We're looking for... Uh, as the maintenance been done. Maybe the car runs fine, but the spark plugs are completely shot. And I tell people, if you have a $10,000 budget for a car, spend nine because I t- guarantee it needs $1,000 of the maintenance. If you have a $5,000 budget, spend $3,500. Most, nobody is selling a used car because they just went and got everything fixed and thought it would be a good idea to sell it afterwards. Although I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah, well, some <laughs> so, of them. Now, I've got a nice used car for sale. Yes, right, right. The uh, Ford so. Explorer. I've heard all about that one. <laughs> Let's go real quickly with Ken in Fountain Hills on a 2008 Ford Mustang. Go ahead, Ken. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, I'm having a 2008 Mustang, having trouble putting fuel in the vehicle. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's day or night. It doesn't matter uh, which fuel station we go to. It's been going for a couple of months. Uh, just all of a sudden started. Run uh, maybe a tenth of a gallon in and uh, clicks off. Try to run it real slow. You know, it'll click and click and click and takes 10, 15 minutes to fill the tank. Also, uh, fuel mileage is down on it um, in the tank, maybe uh, 40, 50 miles or so uh, from where it used to be. Any ideas? I don't know, Jeremy. You got anything? Um, a lot of times it has to do with the EVAP. Uh, a solenoid's staying closed and it's not letting it breathe, so it accepts that fuel. Uh, I've seen that a couple times on different makes and models. It's just a matter of it's a solenoid or something in that nature. Well, so basically, it's not allowing the 
the air to be burped out of the system. You have all this fuel going in, and the air has got to be pushed out. And if the vapor canister solenoids aren't working, the charcoal canister is not working. Maybe the vent tube, for some reason, if the car had ever be been in, in, in an accident, yeah, it might be pinched. Uh, so you've got to let the air get out if you want to get the fuel to get into the car. Well, thanks, Dan and uh, Jeremy, for coming in. Tell us real quickly how they can get a hold of Mesa Auto Works. You can reach us at 480-969-1954, or you can reach us on the web, mesaautoworks.com. And you can also find them and other great shops at bumper to bumperradiocom Thanks, Peter, for running the dials. Next week, we're going to be talking about what you should be looking for in a good auto shop. Remember never to text and drive. It's as bad or worse than drinking and driving. I saw a lady crash into a light post last night. It wasn't pretty. We'll see you next week.